Are we really made out of star stuff? Where did all the elements in our bodies came from? Did stars die for us? And why does the neural network of our brains resemble the cosmic web between galaxies? We all know from school that our bodies are mostly made up of water. This means that 62% of our entire body is made up from hydrogen atoms and 24% from oxygen. The third most common element found in our bodies is carbon. It makes sense to base something complex as life on it, as carbon is the most chemically active element in the periodic table. You can make more types of molecules out of carbon than from all other periodic elements combined. Fourth comes nitrogen with 1% and after that everything else. So what about the universe? The first elements in the periodic table were created by the Big Bang. Millions of years later, the first stars were formed, from hydrogen and helium. These primordial objects produced and dispersed the first heavy elements, paving the way for cosmic chemical enrichment of future stellar populations. Stars that are eight times the mass of our sun produce elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. Half of the carbon in the universe is produced from dying low mass stars. Other types of stars with more than eight solar masses have a violent thermonuclear reaction in their cores due to the higher pressure and temperature. This creates cascading effect, where lighter elements fuse together, creating new ones, reaching up to iron. All elements until this point release energy when fusion happens. After that, to produce the next element, you need to put additional energy. The other half of carbon comes from apocalyptic events where massive stars implode at the end of their life. This we call type 2 supernovas. When a massive star runs out of fuel, it cools off. This causes the pressure to drop, gravity wins out, and the star suddenly collapses. Imagine something one million times the mass of Earth collapsing in 15 seconds. The collapse happens so quickly that it creates enormous shock waves that cause the outer part of the star to explode. This violent reaction happens with enough energy to immediately fuse some of the atoms into higher elements like nickel and uranium. All of the phosphorus that builds our DNA comes from this violent death. On the other hand, only half the iron in your blood comes from type 2 supernovas. This is the explosion of a white world. An extremely dense remnant of a low mass star that can no longer burn nuclear fuel. In this type of supernova, the gravity of the white dwarf steals material away from a nearby stellar companion. When the white dwarf reaches an estimated 1.4 solar masses, it can no longer sustain its own weight and blows up. The exploded remains from a supernova travel throughout the universe only to someday clump together with other stardust and give birth to the next generation of stars and their solar systems. This constant reprocessing of everything is called galactic chemical evolution. What about this image that is floating around the internet? The cosmic web shows us the connection between galaxies and the empty voids between them. This interaction looks very similar to the connection in the neural networks inside the human brain. Right now we know a lot more about the universe than what is happening in our own heads. In some way, studying the cosmic web helps us figure out how neural structures are formed. Let's enlarge the brain to the size of the observable universe. If a single neuron represents a galaxy, then its axon would match very accurately the cosmic web. If we look at the overall structure of the universe and the brain, every galaxy and neuron would each have five connections to its neighbors. On a visual perspective, everything looks the same. It might be a coincidence, or it might be the mathematical language expressing itself as the most efficient and universal way of arranging complex structures. What about composition? The visible universe, all the stars, gas clouds, black holes and galaxies are made up of particles, we call baryonic matter. Perhaps one of the most surprising discoveries is that this ordinary matter makes up only 4% of the mass of the universe. The mass that cannot be seen, but we can detect due to gravitational effects, is called dark matter. In both structures, the flow of energy and information happens in only 25% of its mass. Exploring how the universe is expanding and evolves over time, we have detected the influence of the mysterious dark energy, which gives us the rest 73%. If we look at the composition of the brain, around 75% is made up of water. In both cases, a large part of them is filled with a passive substance that has an indirect role in their internal structures. 
In conclusion, we are complicated in a good way. Stars have died for us to live. We are made of star stuff. Our brains are made in the image of the cosmic web. All of those facts should not make us not special, but more connected with the universe. We not only exist in the universe, but the universe exists in us also. One might say that we are the universe trying to understand itself. <laughs>